When we think of indie development, we usually think of a long process of taking an idea and molding it into a fully formed title. However, before you can do that, you need a concept worth molding into a full release in the first place. It all starts with a spark, a gimmick, a joke that went a little bit too far. Indie gaming concepts can spawn from strange places, but a common place where ideas come to the surface and the seeds are sown for indie classics is at Game Jams. Game Jams are time-limited development events where devs are given a theme and in a limited time frame a small team will need to come up with a cool take on that criteria and make a game that catches the eye of fans. You would think that with these time constraints many would crumble under the pressure and nothing of note would really get produced. But as they say, under pressure, diamonds are formed. There are a number of truly masterful indies that began their life as game jam event games, and we aim to shine a spotlight on those, showing you where some of your favourite indie games were dreamed up. But before we get into things, I want to give a word to our sponsor, the Global Game Club, or GLUB for short. Yes, like a fish. In a nutshell, this is a book club for games where people play games, discuss games at length, and then vote on which games they want to play next. It's a lovely, wholesome community where indie gamers can come together to play games in unison. And while this may be a sponsor, this is something that I wouldn't push unless I believed in it, and I am an active member of this community, so you will see me there if you come across to the Global Game Club. So get yourself over there, sign up for the club, and I'll see you there. So without further delay, here is Indie Game Culture's list of the best game jam games ever made. In at number one we have Roller Drum. We begin with one of my personal favourite indies of 2022, a game that essentially takes the core principles of a high octane third person shooter, mashes it together with the arcade feel of a Tony Hawk's Pro Skater game and then adds some Hunger Games Last Man Standing vibes in there for good measure. In this title you play as Kara Hassan, a newbie in the fight to the death roller disco competition that is Roller Drum. It's a pretty cool concept, but the story is pretty secondary to the manic action, the killer combos and the refined gunplay on show making this a game that's easy to pick up, but a doozy to master. This game began as The Roller Dome back in 2017, and was initially a top-down twin-stick shooter, but all the core mechanics are still there. You still need to do tricks to get ammo, you still need to keep moving or risk being blown to pieces. From humble beginnings, Paul Rabit took this concept and turned it into an arcade-style bullet time masterclass, and if you haven't played it already, you absolutely should. In at number two we have Celeste. You'd imagine that there's actually quite a lot you could do with the theme climbing. You could get really lost in the technical aspects of climbing and make something similar to Jusant, or make something sadistic like Only Up, or you could just end up making the best modern platformer of all time. Well, the beginnings of what would be the best modern platformer of all time at least. Celeste was first dreamt up in 2016 at the 4 Day Game Jam, which is believed to be an internal game jam held by Matt Mix Games, and it was made on a PICO fantasy console no less, so not exactly the most traditional development method to say the least. However, this would help create the eye-catching 8-bit art style that would eventually fill out Celeste's magnificent series of stages. Celeste would go on to take the platforming genre by storm, and thanks to its touching storytelling, its amazing soundtrack by Lena Rain, and its inch-perfect mechanics, it serves as not only one of the best game jam games ever, but one of the best indie games ever. And that is high praise, but it is warranted praise, I assure you. In at number 3 we have Inscription. Inscription began life as a title called Sacrifices Must Be Made, but if you go back and play the game jam offering you'll notice that at its core, the opening of the game has hardly changed at all, aside from a little spit shine here and there. Daniel Millen would cleverly take the limited space theme of the jam and create a title that combined interesting card based mechanics along with an escape the room environment, which essentially set him up to create what accounts for about 50% of Inscription's content today. The game would add to these mechanics by adding an addictive roguelike system akin to Slay the Spire, and of course, the game would pivot to a top-down RPG adventure as well. It's incredible to see how strong the concept was even at the earliest stage possible, and while I can't forgive Daniel Mullen for pivoting away from the card-based roguelite system halfway through the game, this title is well worth any indie fan's time. In at number 4 we have Baba Is You. 
Puzzle games are pretty commonplace in game jams as along with 2D platformers and text-based games, they tend to be the quickest to make. However, a puzzle game lives and dies on the strength of its core concept and Baba As You is a world beater in this department. Baba Is You is a game that was initially presented at the 2017 Nordic Game Jam and even back then it showed incredible promise. Under the theme Not There, the team would create a title that asked players to alter logic on screen to solve puzzles. Baba Is You, Rock Is Push, Wall Is Stop, it all seems like nonsense and gibberish but it makes perfect sense and it's also super clever. Retaining that simplistic art style, Baba As You would flesh out this idea and cement itself as one of the best modern puzzle games of all time. And if you look at the idea in its rawest form, it would have been silly for anyone to bet against this being an inevitability. So any puzzle fanatics out there, get playing Baba Is You. In at number five, we have Super Hot. The FPS genre back in 2013 was a genre that was crying out for something new and inventive to come along and galvanise the genre. Then as if on cue, Superhot came along to give us a break from the annual monotony of Call of Duty. Although it would take a few years before this raw concept would turn into the game that we know and love today. For those unaware, Superhot is an FPS shooter with a core mechanic that time only moves when you do. So essentially, you are in permanent bullet time, making this as much of an action-packed FPS shooter as it is a methodical puzzler. Thanks to this blend of melee and gunplay action, carefully created levels and simple accessible design, Superhot grew from a great idea to an FPS titan in its own right and even has VR functionality and some great DLC in the form of mind control delete for players to jump into as well. It's an FPS title with a twist and if you too are tired of the genre as a whole, Superhot may be the breath of fresh air that you need. In at number 6 we have Tinykin. This one will seem like a bit of an anomaly as the game that would eventually become Tinykin, the Pikmin-esque platformer, doesn't exactly seem like it's cut from the same cloth as the final product, but if you look a little closer, you can definitely connect the dots. The game first appeared at Global Game Jam 2019 under the name Bubble Town, which is a title that required players to head out into the dark wilderness and acquire friends for their settlement. A very simple premise and not exactly the most riveting one, but the building blocks for what would eventually become the tiny kin were formed. These little folks you gathered for your town would eventually be pivoted into the Pikmin style helpers in a 3D stylish platforming setting, which serves as one of the most unique takes on the genre in recent times. And it's all thanks to a little game about making friends. Who knew? In at number 7 we have Loop Hero. In the same jam that we were introduced to the first iteration of what would become Inscription, we were also given the bones of what would become Loop Hero. At the time, the game was called Lupatero, and when the game jam concluded, the game was a mess of mechanics and ideas that didn't quite come together. In short, it was broken. However, after some post-production, weeks after the jam, the game was reposted and showcased idle, roguelike, Commodore 64 inspired gameplay that immediately showed proof of concept, leading to the team pushing forward to create what we now know as Loop Hero. It's one of those games that many will love or loathe depending on how much interactivity you need in a game, as it's about as hands off as a roguelike RPG can be but it's a mechanical marvel that showcases that even with a slew of roguelikes out there after the Hades craze, we still haven't quite milked the subgenre dry just yet. So if you haven't played Loop Hero, I urge you to give it a try. In at number 8 we have Donut County. This one is a little bit hard to explain if you aren't aware of how ridiculous Peter Molyneux is as a person and indeed as a game developer, but to boil it down, his games promise the world and for the most part can't make good on these promises. Black and White and Fable are probably the closest that he's come to delivering the goods, but if you look at his resume, you'll see he's been part of some real stinkers. Well, this naturally led to an AI generated Twitter feed that dreams up game concepts from the mind of Peter Molyneux. And even more bizarrely, there is a one and done game jam in 2012 that asked its participants to take these tweets and create a game based on any that they liked. Talk about a joke that went a bit too far. Well, one amazing game did come from this jam and that was Kachina, a game that would go on to become Donut County. And just for context, this is the tweet that the game was based on. 
you play as a whole, you must move around the environment making certain elements fall in the correct targets at the right time. Off the back of this tweet, the Neon White creator Ben Esposito created a game where you did just that, played as a sentient void eating all the assets in different levels and in doing so he created a very wacky and very clever puzzle title that we think even Peter Molyneux would really enjoy. It's definitely the weirdest origin story on this list, but we kinda like weird. In at number 9 we have The Binding of Isaac. This one is a little bit of a stretch as it wasn't conceived at an official game jam, but instead it was formed under game jam conditions put in place by the eventual game's creator, Edmund McMillan, the creator of Super Meat Boy. The goal was to create a Zelda-like dungeon crawler with a bit of edge, and within a week the game's vertical slice had been created, showcasing that this idea had the legs to become something more than just a peculiar idea. For those unaware, The Binding of Isaac sees you take control of a young child who must delve into the bowels of the earth to escape his Christian mother who is trying to sacrifice her only son to prove her love for God. It's not exactly wholesome content, but what can't be disputed is that this game is about as addicting as it gets. If you somehow missed this gritty indie title, then do yourself a favour and check it out. In at number 10 we have Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. There are some great games that you think could only exist in an in real life board game sort of format. Jackbox is a great example if you need a point of reference, and so is the 2014 global game jam entry Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. This is a game where one player has the instructions to defuse a bomb but isn't in the room to defuse it, then the other has the means of defusing the bomb but can't see the instructions. This inevitably leads to a game of broken telephone where communication breaks down and the bomb goes kaboom. It's a format that was first shown off at Global Game Jam 2014 and took the unconventional route of implementing VR into their build to showcase the possibilities of their title. It's a game that simply cannot be played without others, but it's a wonderful party game and witnessing its genesis is a sight to behold for all indie nerds. And at number 11 we have Forager. Back in 2011 the farming simulator genre was really starting to take off, courtesy of Stardew Valley's runaway success, so games of this nature were naturally on the mind, however taking that concept and making it fit into the theme of arena must have been a tough task for Hobby Frog, but they managed it with aplomb. Forager is a cute pixel title where you begin on a small remote island and through careful resource management and crafting, you can expand your starting area, explore other islands and biomes, and uncover the secrets hidden beyond your little starting area. The vertical slice shown at GMS2 Beta Jam was a wonderful example of what the full game would entail, and while you cannot play this version anymore, there is a free demo with 3 hours worth of content for anyone who wants to dip in their toe before investing time and money in Forager. In at number 12 we have A Little To The Left. The indie gaming scene has always been a hotbed for games that take the mundane and make things interesting. Just look at Lawn Mowing Simulator, Unpacking or Papers Please as prime examples. While A Little To The Left is a quaint little title about household chores and tidying up Marie Kondo style and if you're wondering yes, it does spark joy. To boil it down, the game essentially has you complete a series of point and click slash drag and drop puzzles where you rearrange basic household items in an ideal order. However, the out of control aspect that helped this one meet the theme of the jam is that your menace of a house cat is always on hand to throw a spanner in the works. Then on another front, the game also presents a common coping mechanism used when one feels out of control. This wasn't a game that stood out in terms of GMTK's rankings for that year, but this game would catch the eye of cosy gamers everywhere and this is a relaxing puzzle game that everyone should try if they can. In at number 13 we have Valhalla. If you're someone who likes Coffee Talk, the otherworldly Seattle based visual novel, then you might be surprised to know that the concept for that title had practically been done note for note well before it was a thing in a game called Valhalla. It's a cyberpunk themed booze em up where players will interact with customers, get to know their stories, and work behind the counter as a mixologist creating creative drinks for your clientele. It has the same surreal vibe that Coffee Talk shares, but the gritty dystopian cyberpunk theme really adds adds to the affair. It's basically a waifu dating simulator if you strip it for parts, but it's a damn engaging one, and that was the case even back in 2014. The game came 23rd overall in the Cyberpunk Game Jam and was particularly adored by the community for its aesthetics and synergy. It's a certified hidden gem and a nailed on favourite for everyone who loved Coffee Talk. 
And at number 14 we have Hollow Knight. This is a bit of a strange entry because when Hungry Knight, the first iteration of what would become Hollow Knight, was introduced at Ludum Dare 27, it wasn't anything like the Hollow Knight we know today. In fact, it would only start to take shape in the later submission at Ludum Dare 29. Hungry Knight was a game where you played as a little bug and you would need to defeat bosses in a 10 second period by taking their apples from them. The things that ring true with Hollow Knight today is the knight themselves, who looks identical, and the need to beat a series of tough bosses in unique ways. However, as mentioned, later jams would help them forge a path for their little knight, and before long, Team Cherry would have given birth to arguably the best ND Metroidvania game ever. Play it now, and join the rest of us who eagerly await Hollow Knight Silk Song. And in at number 15, we have Dorf Romantic. Lastly on our list we have Dwarf Romantic, the relaxing and devilishly addictive reimagining of Carcassonne, which sees you build vast landscapes one hexagon at a time. In keeping with the theme, keep it alive, players would be awarded more tiles depending on the synergies they could create in their landscapes with patches of villages and trees lining up nicely scoring more points. The prototype at Ludumdare 46 showed the core mechanics of this mindless puzzler and immediately folks knew that there was something rather gripping about this unassuming tile builder. Jump forward a few years and Dorf Romantic is highly regarded as a top tier cosy game that has spawned many copycat attempts like Land Above Sea and Panorama. An imitation is the highest form of flattery. That's what they say, right? It's a game that I have mindlessly lost an afternoon playing and I reckon if you play this one you will too, so fair warning. So there you have it guys, 15 games that began life as simple vertical slices at game jams, but soon grew into recognisable indie hits that we know and love today. If anything, I hope that this list of indie greats urges you to watch more game jams as they unfold, and as always, thank you for watching Indie Game Culture. I'll see you next time.